When a file is sent off for professional printing, it's generally printed on a much larger page and then trimmed down. So here's the potential problem. If we create artwork on the computer at the exact size it's to be printed at, when it comes time to be trimmed, if there's any misalignment between that blade and the page, we could potentially end up with slivers of white down edges of our page. So that's why the concept of bleed was introduced, and I have a demo file here on screen. So if I zoom in on, say, the upper right, excuse me, the upper left corner just here, this black line just here, that represents the actual page edge. The red line just here represents what's called bleed. So what this means is any graphical element, any color that's pushed into that bleed area will ultimately be trimmed away. But it's also there so that again, if there's any misalignment between the blade and that page edge, we're not going to end up with those potential slivers of white. So that little space there between the black and the red is called the bleed. And I'd like to now explore that with you in a little bit more detail. So let's, uh, let's close that up. Let's create a new file, file, new document. Now it doesn't matter too much about the dimension size here, guys. I'm going to be using A4 as an example today. But the most important thing we need to pay attention to is this area just down here, bleed and slug. So let's open that up. So by default, my bleed is coming in as zero mil. Actually, I'll just do a quick OK and show you what that looks like. So if I zoom in on the page, these pink and purpley lines just in here, they represent the page margins. They're not actually relevant for anything we're doing today. This black edge just here where the white meets the gray, that's the actual page edge. So you can see there's no bleed on this document. So I'll just close that and Command or Control N to bring up our new document dialog box. So let's dial in a bleed. Now, typically uh, bleeds in a country like Australia will be something like three millimeters. Also notice if I type in three guys and just press the tab key, all of those values just populate there, top, bottom, left and right, because of the little link icon just in there. Now, uh, a typical value in say a country like the US where they're using inches will be 0.125 of an inch. That's an eighth of an inch. So again, I'm just gonna use three mils as an example, typically, but what I'll do is just so you can really see what's going on here on screen, just for this example, I'm going to be using 10 mil. Again, a gross exaggeration of what you typically use, but just so we can see it nicely on screen. So I've got my A4 document. There's the 10 mil just there. Also wanna point out to make it 100% clear, guys, the bleed is added around the A4 page, okay? So the actual page itself still remains as 210 by 297 in terms of millimeters, that 10 mil bleed will be added to the outside of that. So it's not removing anything from the page. Let's choose okay. And let's zoom in on that upper left corner again. Okay, so there's that black line representing the page edge and there's my bleed just up there. So you can see it's very easy to create a bleed when you create a document. But let's say uh, you need to add a bleed after the fact or adjust the bleed. That's also very easy to do. Let's go up under file document setup. And we basically see that same dialog box we saw a moment ago when we created the document. And just down here is the bleed section. If you don't see it, just hit that little triangle to open it up and you can easily make an adjustment just there, but I'll just choose okay. So how do we actually utilize this thing now that we've actually got it within our document? Well, if I go up to file place, let's grab that same beach image and I'll just click and drag to place it there like so. Now let's say we're not covering the entire document in this case, guys, I'll just keep it nice and simple and tuck it in the upper left just here. So normally if we were designing, this is what it will ultimately look like with it tucked it into the upper left corner just there. But we know that we need to push all of our graphical elements into the bleed. So we don't want that, we want that. So guys, any graphics that you create that get to the edge of the page, make sure you push all the way to the bleed. The same is true of, say, a block of solid color. So if I just drag out a rectangle here, and if I go up under window, um, color swatches, we can easily give that any color we like. We'll just choose red. And so again, let's say this was to be in the upper right corner. We would actually need to make sure that this extends all the way to the upper right corner for the bleed. Okay, very cool. So we've created a bleed, we've edited the bleed. Uh, let's look at, oh, actually one thing I'll show you here, uh, guys, is down the bottom left corner of the tools panel just here. If I click and hold, 
we see normal and we see preview just down here. So by default, we see the document in normal mode. That's why we see things like margins and bleeds. But if we wish to see the document uh, more like what it will actually print like, if I just come down there and choose preview, that's what we're seeing just there. So the bleed's still there, it's just temporarily turned off. Now you can also toggle between these two modes, the normal and the preview mode, by pressing the W key. So let's do that just now. So if I tap W, it'll bring everything back, including that bleed area. Press W again, and it will disappear like so. Okay, very nice. Let's export this out as a PDF, because there's a couple of things I'd like to show you just now. So we're very happy with our document. It's time for professional printing. Let's go up to File, Adobe PDF Presets, and I'm going to choose Press Quality. Depending on which printing company you're dealing with, they may actually have their own PDF presets, which they can supply you with, and you can easily load up and use just here. So you don't have to use Press Quality. I'm just using it in this example today. So I'll choose Press Quality. Actually, I'll just quickly save the file before I do that, and I'll just save it to the desktop. I'll just call it Test. So File, PDF Presets, Press Quality, and let's just save this to the desktop, test.pdf. Let's just run with all the defaults. We're going to come back in here in a second, and I'll choose Export. I'm going to create the PDF and open it up here inside of Acrobat. Okay, so if we zoom out, we can see there's our document just there, but it doesn't look like the bleed's actually been included. Now that's actually what happens by default. Just jumping back into InDesign, Let's go back up under File, PDF Presets, Press Quality again. And actually let's this time call it Test with Marks. Because what I want to point out just here is, if we come down to the Marks and Bleeds section, there's a section here called Marks and Bleeds. Let's turn on All Printers Marks. And I wanna show you what happens if we just do that. All Printers Marks, choose Export. Again, it's gonna load up inside of Acrobat. Let's zoom in nice and large just here, 200%. So actually I'll zoom out just to show you the whole document. So this time you can see we've got a whole bunch of extra stuff going on around the edges. And let's now zoom back into that upper left corner just there. That's our crop mark just there, guys. So that's actually indeed showing where the, say, top and the left edge are to be cropped. So why don't we have any graphical elements pushing outside that crop area into that bleed area, what's going on just there? Let's jump back into InDesign. Let's again go up to File, Adobe PDF Presets, Press Quality. Let's call this one Test with Marks and Bleed, choose Save. Come back to Marks and Bleeds. We'll turn on All Printers Marks again. Just down here, guys, Use Document Bleed Settings. Now notice, by default, for some odd reason, Although this preset is designed for professional printing, the bleed is set to zero. Now, if I just tick these little boxes here, use document bleed settings, this dialog box reaches out to the document and pulls in the actual bleed settings. So yes, it's grayed out, but you can see that now currently reads as 10 mil. If I turn that off, you can see that you could actually set your own values just here, but generally no real, no real need to. We'll just turn that back on. So we have all of the printer's marks, plus the bleed should be included now. Let's choose export and see what we get inside of Acrobat. Fantastic, this is looking great. Look at this upper left corner just here. That's our crop mark just there. And you can see all of our graphical elements which now extend into the bleed. Fantastic. So uh, that's pretty much it there for setting up and editing bleeds inside of InDesign, guys. I hope that helps. Catch you later.